given this polynomial, again, degree three, factorize it if it has a double root. Okay, so what are we gonna do with this thing? I wanna think to what we know about the multiplicity of roots, right? I have a root of multiplicity two. That means that the derivative is going to have a root of multiplicity one at the same place, whatever, whatever that happens to be, whatever, wherever that double root is, okay? Now just before we actually launch into the calculus, can you see why this ends up being so useful in this particular question, right? What makes this cubic awful to deal with is that guy, right? Like, what's, what's our other way of factorizing a cubic? Like, what, what tools division. do we have? And all well, the not, ju not just long division, you've got to find the first factor yeah. originally, right? So you've got to plug numbers into that, and it's just like, I know it's going to be something terrible, okay? Uh, I have some reasonable guesses, thinking back to what I know. This is, um, this is Monic, right? So I'm expecting something of this form. <coughs> Right, but not knowing whether it has a, um, like not knowing much about alpha and beta and gamma, like I hope none of them are complex, all that kind of thing, right? You're never gonna guess a complex root. So you want, you're just kind of hoping and praying. Now, just as a bit of a tip, see how this here, right, 245, clearly can only be a product of alpha, beta, and gamma. Do you see that? Like it has to come out of all of the constant terms. So I am guessing out of alpha, beta, and gamma, one of them is probably five. This is just a reasonable guess because that's that's an I can't see any other obvious factors. We'll find out more about them in a second. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, sir. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if if you um, use that method, yep. will you, you won't find the complex root for you. Um, well, if there are, <laughs> it's a cubic, so it has to have at least one real root, right? Yes. So hopefully, I should find that one if I'm lucky. Oh, so <laughs> right? if I find the real one and then later on. Correct. Then I would divide. Okay. okay. But all of that is still a bit moot because, okay. well, we know more about this, so we don't need to go to those lengths, okay? Let's go to the calculus now. I can say P dash, right, is going to be equal to, it's a simple root, right? What am I going to get? 3x squared plus 18x plus 24. Excellent, okay? And you can see I can take out my factor of 3, and this ends up being quite simple to factorize, right? What are my pair of factors? X minus... Plus 7 minus 1. Yep. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Okay, so P dash, right? You can see it's got two roots. That corresponds to being cubic. That corresponds to the fact that it's got two stationary points. That's not surprising, okay? But since it has a double root, I know that one of these stationary points must be one of the zeros of the original polynomial. Does that make sense? <laughs> so one of these, right? X equals negative seven or X equals one must be a root of not just p dash, but the original function. Okay? So therefore, I can clearly test this out. Now, I'm gonna look at this and make an educated guess, and I'm not even gonna bother putting in one. <laughs> like you see, well, what's the point? You're never gonna get there, okay? But to make sure that I'm not confusing myself, I am gonna evaluate p of negative, negative seven, just to make sure I'm not deluding myself, okay? This is gonna be minus 343, plus 9 lots of 49, minus 21 lots of negative 7, minus 245, okay? And you can go ahead, you can evaluate that. Pretty sure we're going to get to zero. Okay, yep. Good, so therefore, what have I established? I've shown, okay, I know where the stationary points will be. Now I know that this stationary point is one of the roots, okay? So therefore, what can I, what can I say about P of X? If I know, I found the double root. So what does that tell me about the factorization? That's what x plus seven squared. Very good. So so the factor z or x minus alpha, which is plus seven. So that's x plus seven. It occurs twice, and then I'm going to have some other thing hanging off on the end. I'm going to call it beta. It's the, it's the next root I'm trying to find. Okay. At this point, you can do the method we said before. You can just evaluate p of naught. Right. So evaluating at x equals zero. On the left hand side, by definition, zero, 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 negative 245. What's that gonna be equal to? 49. This is 49, very good. And this is negative beta. Negative right? So it looks to me like, we'll call on, negative? No, like. Negative, yeah, yeah. you put it, you've, you've <laughs> extended yeah. it, okay. So I'm gonna get a beta of five. 
Yeah. So therefore, now I've actually completed. Since I've got roots, that means I've got factors. So I can say therefore, p of x is already got had these before, and now I have these. Boy, that was a lot better than trying nine or ten instances of the factor theorem, right? Right. Now, like I said, if if we didn't know this, if we forgot this, okay. I actually mentioned, we anticipated before that 5 was likely to be one of the roots. And in fact, just as a sneaky sort of option, um, you can't always rely on this because of the, the possibility of there being complex roots. But if you take this guy, 245, and if you just put like 245 in your calculator, and then you press the factorize button, it's going to hand you the prime factorization, and you have some very what? good guesses. Where is this for, button? So, yeah, right. <laughs> Next to this Where is this mythical shift, button? Why have a mythical button? <laughs> well, I, don't blame me because my calculator didn't have this when I was going through the FLC. On mine that I have right now, oh it's just above the degrees great. minutes seconds button. So when you go shift, oh factorize, it hands to you the factorization. Yeah, that's, this is very true. So you are lucky in that this particular number happens to be, like the factors that we wanted, they're all prime. Do you notice that? That's kind of what makes it easy. But as is pointed out, well, let's, let's do like four Wait, times like six times eight. eight. If you say, if you've got like 192 here, right? And you say, ooh, 192. And you go shift, factorize, you've got two to the six times three, which is many combinations of different numbers you may have to try. So you want to come back to this. 